This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'll be spending a day with North Korean defectors to learn the truth about being born in a country with a severe and isolated dictatorship, the lengths they went to escape, and the struggles of adapting to an entirely new world and concept of freedom. By the end of this video, we'll find out if these escapees have been able to approach life outside of North Korea with a sense of hope, or if living through the torturous nightmare that was once their reality has proven far too traumatic for them to ever find a true sense of peace. Hello, Lucy. Hi. Sherry. Hi, Anthony. Do you feel like you're risking your safety by coming on here and speaking about your escape story, knowing that authority in North Korea could potentially see this video? I would be very scared. But right now I am a citizen of South Korea. So I'm very protected over this government. My father got tortured in North Korean prison and he suffered all his life. My mom's sister, recently she was sent to prison and she got tortured cruelly and now she's in a uh, serious condition. Now my mom and my sister support me to speak out against the regime. This is meaningful uh, work for my, our people in North Korea. I feel like most people watching have no idea what North Korea is really like. Can you explain the extent of the strict rules and repression that North Korean citizens face? North Korea has countless ridiculous rules that North Koreans must obey. A lot of security enforcement regulation. One of them is electricity inspection. Often security officers come into your house without notice to check if you are using electricity or not. If you don't have money to bribe them, then you will send to forced labor camp. Security officers come into your house in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. of course, without any notice, yeah. to check if any strangers are sleeping in your house. North Korea is the no freedom of movement. So mm. even in inside North Korea, we cannot travel fr freely within uh, North uh, country. The government has to know where you are at all times, and you have exactly. to be in the place where you're supposed to be. If you ask anybody from North Korea, the thing that you have to have in your home, you have to have the portrait of Kim Jong-il, Kim Il-sung, and right now, Kim Jong -il. I remember growing up really bowed, bowing down to the picture as if it's, you know, God. At the time, I really thought he was God. I thought he wasn't human. It is the duty of the family to keep the portraits clean at all times. Often security officers come into your house to check if any dust on the portraits. And the punishment of having dirty portraits is to send you to force the labor camp. Sounds like that's the punishment for everything. Yeah, everything we do in North Korea is all about the worshiping the Kim family and loyal to the Kim family. Did you find any of these things strange at the time or was it just a normal part of life for you? At the time, I thought it was completely normal because if I look at my right my right or left, you know, everybody was doing the same thing. You know, there was nothing to, for me to compare with. North Korean people are systematically brainwashed from a young age. I thought of, uh, Kim, the Kim family uh, was God. <laughs> when he was born, the whole world was so happy that two rainbows are appealed in the sky to celebrate his birth. He formed and, a double rainbow at his birth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the regime has started working on idolizing Kim Jong-un. So Kim Jong-un was able to drive a tank at the age of six. North Korean people, they don't take it. Yeah, I mean, when you're taught something forever, it doesn't seem silly at all. Yes, so everyone actually believes it. What was your extent of knowledge of the outside world? I didn't know the outside world even existed. 
I thought the only mm. country that exists in this entire world was only North Korea. At, at times,、uh, I would listen to adult conversations. Some people in our family they they escaped this country and they went to South Korea and they create these rumors like if you go to South Korea, you have to sell your blood to survive, and you know it's so poor, you have to sell your、uh, physicalness. It's better to stay here than leave. The media. Is strictly controlled by the regime, so we don't know about how it looks like outside North Korea. The only way we can learn is through、uh, foreign films. When we have electricity, we watch it secretly foreign <laughs> films. So your family would sneak movies and TV shows, and you guys would watch it in secret. Yeah, in secret. In North Korea, there is only one TV channel. The contents broadcasts all about like、mm. history and like worship the Kim family. So we just turned off right away. <laughs> Even North Korean movies are all about the loyalty to the Kim regime. A certain time, like it was four o'clock, they would show us cartoons. These character of squirrel wearing this army uniform and killing American characters. And we would always win. They were showing the kids North Koreans killing Americans. Even in kindergarten, if you encounter American person with big nose, blue eyes, they are not human. You have to kill them. Literally, you just have to kill them. They're not. Wow. Did you ever discuss any of your negative thoughts that you had about the regime with anyone else? Never. The regime encourages people to、uh, spy on each other and. It's the duty as a citizen to report it. We don't usually share negative thoughts or towards the regime, anyone except family members. So three of us, we were talking about it, right? If she do- doesn't report me, then another one will report it. Then both of us, we will、uh, be punished. So one person could be punished merely for hearing and not reporting. Exactly. How old were you when you eventually escaped? I was, you know, ten. I escaped when I was seventeen years old. Were you aware of any of the consequences of escaping the country? We totally aware of what consequences of escaping. North Korean defectors, if they are caught、uh, during their escaping, we will be sent to prison and we will be tortured cruelly. And、mm. once you get in there, you cannot get out of prison until you die. When I left China with my sister, which of us we carried a razor and we planned on using those razors,、uh, commit a suicide by cutting our wrist in case we were captured. I wasn't aware until I escaped, and my mom told me that we will be all executed. And she she showed me in our pocket she had this little black thing, and that was. If we were to get caught, she would feed us these little things, and we would just kill ourselves. So your mom knew that the punishment would be so harsh that you could face imprisonment, torture, and she would be better off serving you something that would kill you instantly instead of having you potentially face all those horrors. Yes. What were the events that led up to that, and? How did you eventually escape? You know, my mom. I was playing with my friends. She came to pick me up at nighttime. Right next door, there was this guy who I've never met before, who eventually turned out to be a broker.、Yeah. You know, broker did all the things. We crossed the Tumen River, and、yeah. we got there safely. There was a taxi waiting for us. We hop onto the taxi. We didn't say anything, and I was sitting by the window seat, and I would just look around, and I would see these huge buildings. I had a million questions to my mom, like where is, where are we? So we left North Korea completely. We are in China. We moved around a lot because for safety reasons. One day, the broker was like, "I'm taking you to a pub, a, like a private restaurant." We went into this private room, and the next thing you know. Five, six tall guys comes in, burst open the door, and started screaming at us, "Get out! Just get out!" As we went outside, there was 
two big vans waiting for us. So we had to go in. And it was really funny because at that time, that short time, the, the amount of things that went in through my head was, oh, what are what are we going to do? Like, yeah. are they going to kill us? We arrived in a destination and they started to take off their clothes and they were wearing a clothes that looked like a police officers. They came towards us and I was like, are you guys hungry? You were like treated like hostages or like you were being held yeah. for ransom. And then all of a sudden they're, yeah. they're they're treating you with respect. We were sitting here completely confused. They feed us food. The next day we met with our previous broker and he was smiling to us like everything's going to be okay. I paid them the money. So basically, you know, they wanted us just to get the money. God, and at what cost though? I mean, that must have been traumatizing for you. I remember that moment clearly and I started to have nightmares right after escaping and you know living in South Korea when I turned to 16 years old I got selected to the pleasure squad the pleasure squad is like the regime select girls all over the country pretty and young and there's a certain uh, standard the girls who got selected they have to or go through all like strict uh, examination. Plus, it's a virgin test as well. After you pass, then you go to Pyongyang, only serve only for the Kim dictator. For the Kim Jong-un or Kim Jong-il, there's a lot of uh, like resort for them. You can be a nurse or you can be a dancer in front of Kim Jong-un or you can be a massager. Little did you know that you might have had to put your hands all over Kim Jong Un. It's so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds sounds a little uncomfortable. I didn't know, but only thing we know is the honorable thing to serve the Kim dictator, right? Your family members or like people are like just looked up to you. So while through process to go to Pyongyang, I was working in the mayor's villa in my hometown. At the time, I couldn't see my family relatives and friends and i just soon felt like i was in prison so i decided to escape the only option for me was climbing over the wall i noticed that there's some rocks scattered around the wall another thing i've noticed that like people in the villa they fell asleep deeply between 2 a.m and 3 a.m every day that time I <laughs> came out of the uh, room and I scaled the rocks and piled it. I piled it and then until I make it, I just uh, spread the rocks again and then piled it again. You were training yourself to stack these rocks up and see exactly. how quickly you could get it done and have exactly. enough time to escape. So for 15 days, finally, yeah, I was uh, able to escape. When I escaped the villa, actually, I didn't really know that I made a serious crime. I arrived in the city and I bumped into my friends at her yard. I told her, I'm going to see my family. And she said, you know what? You cannot go to see your family, so why not? And she said, 400 soldiers are chasing you and looking for you on the border. 400 soldiers? Yeah. <laughs> Did you I have was any idea that that many soldiers would be chasing you? I didn't have any idea. So she, uh, helped me to hide in friend's yeah. friend's house. So I hid it in, in that house for three months. You thought so, that they would just stop searching for you after exactly. a certain amount yeah, of months. Exactly. But the uh, people who helped me to hide, they, they are afraid of that they will be punished too. That's why they say, oh, we cannot uh, <laughs> help you anymore. Finally, I hid it in the kimchi cellar. No windows, you know, it's on the ground. I actually hid it there for one month. My skin was getting to yellow because I couldn't see the light. Yes, that's why I got really sick. Did you think that you might die there? I heard the people talking outside the kimchi cellar. They say, oh, she's going to die soon. I was so hopeless. The only way I, can, I could live was 
was across the border. Once I decided to escape from North Korea, we borrowed the military general car and I hid his uh, in the trunk. How did, how did you get in contact with this high ranking general to get into the car? My friends contact him because they uh, know it, known each other. He was in the car. So it was uh, safe for me to pass the guard's post. I cannot imagine the feeling of being trapped in a trunk crossing the border knowing that I could be captured, never see my family again. It was so scared. Once we arrived, there were another soldiers who work on the border. They helped me to cross the border to China. And how did that feel knowing that you had made it? I really, <laughs> while I crossed the border, like until I make it to China, Chinese border, I actually eventually I <laughs> cried out. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> How has your life changed most since you escaped? Before we continue learning about the world of North Korean defectors. If I criticize the president, <laughs> president yeah. of the United States, I don't right. need to worry about being arrested. I want to thank Raycon for sponsoring this episode and supporting this series. I have actually been using their headphone for this interview and let me tell you, they are a treat for my ear hole. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market and sound just as great as the other top audio brands. Their everyday earbuds, these that I'm using today, include a 32 hour battery life, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a very comfortable noise isolating fit. And Raycons come with a 45 day happiness guarantee. You're guaranteed to look like this, so you really can't lose. So create your own soundtrack with Raycon. And right now, I spent a day with viewers and listeners get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash spent. That's buyraycon.com slash spent to save 15% on Raycon. And while I've got you here, I'd like to thank Kraken for sponsoring this episode. If you're interested in investing in cryptocurrencies, but you're like many of us and aren't sure where to get started, you should check out the Kraken app. With Kraken, you can buy and sell over 50 of the most popular cryptos like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and Ethereum on the go 24 seven. It's super easy to get started. And by super easy, I mean very, very, very easy. All you gotta do is download the app, create your account, and you'll be investing in mere minutes. One of the absolute coolest things about buying crypto through Kraken is that you don't need a lot of money to try it out. So even if Bitcoin is worth something like $50,000, like it probably will be by the time this episode comes out, you can buy as little as $10 worth on Kraken to give it a shot. Find out for yourself why Kraken has been listed as one of the highest rated places to buy crypto for the last 10 years. Visit kraken.com slash Padilla now to learn more or just search for Kraken in the app store. Now, back to the world of North Korean defectors. How has your life changed most since you escaped? I don't need to watch out my tongue. <laughs> you don't need to watch what you say. <laughs> <laughs> but in this country, even if I criticize the president, <laughs> president yeah. of the United States, I'm totally fine. I don't right. need to worry about being arrested or killed. How does it feel knowing that you can now talk about these things freely, even even here on a platform that could be seen by potentially millions of people, knowing that you won't face a life in prison or torture just for speaking out? I'm speechless. Just it's a uh, amazing thing for North Korean people to think about. We never think of this kind of freedom exists. Like, what is your dream? What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to become in the future? And in North Korea, there's no such question. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, in North Korea, they would ask us, how would you make a leader happy? So how did it feel to have that kind of empowerment? to feel like you had some control, some choice in your life? At first, it was a little bit of feeling of burden. Like having too many choices of places to eat or too many choices of things to watch on Netflix? <laughs> okay, yeah, too much choices, like, really is <laughs> hard. <laughs> I have my own choice, I have my life, and it is my responsibility to become who I want to be, do the things that I want. What's your favorite part about your new daily life? Not having to worry about if someone is watching me. If I say this wrong things, that I'll, my life will be in danger. We would always talk about if we didn't escape, like we wouldn't be eating this food today. We wouldn't be able to do the things that we are doing right now. So everything really makes us to really appreciate the things that is given to us at this moment. 
What were some of the most shocking discoveries or experiences that you had outside of North Korea? You know, growing up, I got to see the plane in a textbook with a drawing of a plane. So I've actually never seen a plane in my real life. People can't fly. Objects can't fly. That was my thoughts. Like, you know, they are lying to us. Like, how can we fly? <laughs> you didn't even think that people could fly. Do you remember the feeling of lifting up off the ground for the first time? I just didn't want to believe that was happening to me. <laughs> Did you get a chance to look out the window? Why is everything, <laughs> why is these people looking like an ant? I was making these comments um, to myself and my brother ended up like smacking on my, my back and said, act normal. Like, this is just, just don't say anything. He was embarrassed about the fact that you were seeing a million new things all at once, experiencing something that you had only barely heard of even existing whatsoever. When I landed in uh, South Korea and I see these sparkling, shiny things, the time that we landed, the season was spring and I thought it was winter because I saw ice. That ended up being a marble floor. A marble floor looked like ice. And right in front of me, you would see National Intelligence Service people waiting to pick us up. And, you know, he would say, you know, this is completely normal. We see them doing this all the time. Do you miss anything about your lifestyle in North Korea? There is no memorable lifestyle other than people. So I miss relatives and friends and I miss the times my family spent together in North Korea. How much of a connection do you still have with your friends and family that are still in North Korea? North Korea is not a country where I can make a phone calls whatever I want. I can only contact them when they call me. I only contact our relatives once a year. We cannot have deep conversations because North Korean regime tries to track the phone signal. So you have to talk really quickly and try to get as much as you can. How much time do you get per conversation? We have a very limited time, like 10 minutes. And if there's anyone in North Korea that somehow sees this video, is there anything that you'd want to say to them? I escaped from North Korea and I am very privileged to live and have this freedom to live. But I just want you guys to be safe. Um, I just want you guys to be healthy and I hope to see you one day. North Koreans are like birds trapped in the cage built by the dictator. We don't know that we live as slaves to the dictator. So I hope if they can see this video, learn the truth and find the freedom by tearing down the cage built by the dictator. Josh Dove wants to know, what are some facts or ideas the outside world has about North Korea that are totally wrong? When people think about North Korea, they think of nuclear weapons. But North Korea is the world's number one human rights violator. Countless people are executed and sent to political prison camp for unknown charges and mm. are treated worse than an animal. Yeah, instead of just thinking mm -hmm. about the North Korean threat to the world mm -hmm. with nuclear weapons, yes. mm -hmm. you want people to realize that the North Koreans themselves are you know, separate from the government. They don't want to experience this yes. repression yeah, that they're experiencing. Yeah, these human beings like us are suffering. What do you think the biggest misconception is about North Korean defectors? People should know that North Korean defectors, we, uh, we, did not, uh, we didn't gain the freedom easily. And even at this moment, Kim Jong-un tries really hard to catch defectors. If we are like being kidnapped and sent back to North Korea, then there's no chance to survive. All right, you got five seconds to shout out or promote anything you want directly in the camera. Go. I have YouTube. Please uh, subscribe my channel to uh, support me to bring the plight of North Koreans. I just want to say thank you, Anthony, for having me. And shout out to you. Me? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. You know, I'll shout you out. Lucy has a YouTube channel. You need to go check it out immediately. She talks a lot about this kind of stuff on there. <laughs> Well, there you have it. I spent a day with North Korean defectors and I feel like I understand what living in North Korea and escaping is like a little bit more. And I commend these guests for their courage in reliving these 
heavy experiences with me today so we can all better understand the conditions that millions of people are living in at this very moment. Living in South Korea, the most common question that you get, you get asked is, what's your favorite food? The first food that I was most shocked was definitely the fast food, the hamburgers. Hamburgers were like life-changing food. <laughs> Do you remember your first time biting into one? You know, if you look at ratatouille, that's how I felt. Like I bite into my... <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I went through all of this escape progress just to eat this hamburger, and that was worth it. 